All right, guys. Uh, well, I want to say first, thank you for coming to the Gifferential. Um, this podcast is um, very near and dear to my heart as far as the time it's taken to get to the point where I could put these together for you guys and the invested time that my team and I have put into putting them together and coming up with the guests we've been able to get on and um, and work with us. And it's been a really cool, fun experience to this point, and hopefully there's a lot more to come. Um, we're going to have some cool, unique people on here from the world of business to sports to um, – pretty much everything in the middle too. Uh, so it's, it's, it's going to be a continuous evolution of a lot of fun, unique guests. And I hope you guys pull in some great stories from this and can use some of the knowledge and applications of some of the things these folks are doing in your own lives. And, and hopefully it, uh, it betters you. And if nothing else, you get a great story out of it. Having said that it's, um, time for zero zero one. It's, uh, Mr. Matt Owen. He is the owner of project deliverance here in St. Louis. He is also a Jim Jones advocate. He handles most of their marketing, handles a ton of programming, and trains some pretty prestigious athletes from the UFC to college football, high school level, all the way up and down the rung. So uh, hope you guys enjoy this. Well, right. welcome, man. Thank you, man. I've been, I've been, I've been dying to do this. <laughs> yeah, um, thanks, for, thanks for having me on. Yeah. This is big deal. So, Dude, this is awesome. So. Yeah. I'm going to go right into it, man. I want people to know who you are. So tell me, you know, this is Matt Owen, by the way. If you don't know, now you know. He is uh, <laughs> he is absolutely awesome. He's one of the I've, – I've been a personal victim at his gym. Oh. And uh, it's, uh, it's a real privilege to, uh, to have an opportunity to work out with a guy who has this kind of knowledge and intensity. Um, having said that, man, tell me about your journey because I just want to hear, like, how you go from Lindenwood, human okay. performance student, to Jim um, Jones Phenom. So basically, you know, starting at Lindenwood, uh, came into the university, you know, wanting to play football, wanting to run track, um, looking for a major, wasn't really sure what to do, came in just business because I didn't, I didn't really have a clue, even though, you know, over, over at high school, you know, they're trying to help you find your way as you're getting into college. Right. So I yeah. came in and, you know, played football for a year, just took general ed studies, you know, was under a business administration advisor at the time. Um, 300 came out in March yeah. of 2007. So went, went and saw that, you know, with my friends was all hyped up about it. My dad dropped me the link to the Jim Jones website. I was like, Hey, you need to, you need to check these guys out. So went on the website, pretty much read everything I could read. And there was no exercise science department at Lindenwood yet. So no kidding. Um, I did not went, know that. went to the athletic training department, you, you know, to just kind of try and get get moving in that direction um, and was told, you know, if you come into the athletic, if you come into the athletic training program and, you know, start taking these core classes, you know, the biology, the chemistry, the kinesiology, there's going to be some overlap and we're going to launch this program your junior year. So I ended up applying to the athletic training program and getting in there and running classes for athletic training, even taking some like clinical courses. So like injury treatment and stuff like that. So so you were prepping your way. You're building your oh, yeah. way the whole way. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, learning how to tape ankles, learn how to treat treat injuries. I ended right. up in the wrestling program, um, and they figured out I had a knack for strength and conditioning because that's what I wanted to do uh, ultimately. So the dean of admissions, who was also the wrestling coach, was like, hey, for your for your work study, we're going to make you our, you know, student strength coach. So yeah. anyone, anyone who's hurt is going to end up with you. And yeah. I was like, okay, I need three Airdyne bikes. I need kettlebells from 25 to 72 I need you know slam balls and sandbags and two weeks later all that showed up so <laughs> and then when guys would get hurt he would say That's okay cool. well if you're hurt you're going to mat pretty soon the injury rate was through the floor because no one wanted to come and spend yeah. an entire two-hour practice with me doing sprints and kettlebells and stuff like that so well, I remember that uh I was gonna say I remember that what was that what's that machine you put me on for the knee the um, knee was tore the uh inverse curl problem yeah yeah Yep. I mean, I'm just like, uh, yep. and I had the other one too that you had me do where I had to awesome. step yep. forward, yep. backward. Yep. Yep. ATP. So ATP, that's all, yeah. you know, all the like West side barbell stuff. That's all really good, really good equipment. I would yeah. highly recommend it to anyone who's building a gym. So, so you get in, so, so you get in, you get through that program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jim Jones has obviously been a part of that as you go through. Right. So you're done with college. So I actually what? got onto the Jim Jones scene, um, 2008. So we, 
we ended up seeing 300, you know, my freshman year, discovered the website, and I needed a place to train for college sports. So, right. you know, I'm like, you know, I want to run some of the stuff that they're doing on this on this website because everything was public back then. There was no membership yeah. site. So um, got a bunch of my friends together, and we basically pooled our money and bought a bought a barbell, bought some plates, bought some kettlebells, and set up in my parents' garage. Yeah. And we were there until probably 2011. So we were there for four solid years, you know, just, you know, we bought rowers and bikes. Yeah, I remember and seeing like the that. original, yeah. you know, the original group of guys because you had like a one page yep. website. Yep. I remember when I got sent the link, I was like, what is this? Right. And like, yeah. That, and everyone was like, you know, we started posting pictures on Facebook of us training and we'd post the workout and people would be like, what? You know, you just don't do this. Yeah. Like this isn't, <laughs> people don't just post. I can remember the comments on it. Like who, 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 who posts pictures of themselves working out? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that was, Cause there was no wasn't Instagram or anything. Yeah, you know? It wasn't a thing yet. They're like, exactly. who, who does this? Gym kind of selfies thing, were not a, were not popular right. at that And point. you know, it was just pictures of me and my friends, you know, lifting weights and carrying kettlebells and doing sprints up the hill. I made my little sister who's three years younger than me come out with a little snap camera and take little digital photos. of yeah. us. And that's what I was. So, so, so here's what was shocking to me when I found out or learned what, or who they were, right? Which I didn't know for years. I mean, yeah. You had found out early yep. on and people didn't know. Right. So in your words or in theirs, what makes Jim Jones Jim Jones versus so, Gold's Gym or Club Fitness <coughs> per se? I would say what makes Jim Jones Jim Jones is the mindset that we bring to the table. Um, people think Jim Jones is a training program. Jim Jones is a set of training philosophies. So – the mind is primary, number one. You know, find the problem, fix the problem. Um, nutrition is the foundation. You know, and there's the list goes on. There's about 12 of them. So right. just run down the list. And really, it's uh, these training philosophies are adaptable to any kind of goal that you have. So, I mean, if you want to go and be a weightlifter like me, you can take these principles and you can – adapt them to what you're doing for your training. You know, if, if you want a firefighter, you're a special forces right. operator, you're a UFC fighter. Right. Which we'll talk about right. in a minute. If you want to train for selection, you know, then that, that there's a, that's a different path, but the philosophies are the same. So, okay. You know, so you take this set of core principles yep. and everybody yep. comes in the door. That's right. That's how we that's put it right. together. You know, whether you're trying to lose 30 pounds or step in the ring for the UFC, it's just, you know, every, the, the mindset's the same. The approach is the same. So, okay. That's very cool. Yep. That's very cool. Yep. So you're with them. Mm -hmm. Project Deliverance. Did that come naturally or was that just like you're working in the so, gym and you're like, dude, let's do um, this. Let's call it this. You How go to, that? so the original Jim Jones site, they had four links at the top of the page. Deliverance was at the end and that was the doorway to get in. So we all at the time, you know, wanted to train at Jim Jones. So, um, Jim Jones is heavily based off of the Fight Club model, and we all know Fight Club, Project Mayhem. Right. So we took Project from that and Deliverance from the page from their website and put it together, <laughs> and that's together. how we came up with the name. So that's the history behind the name. Oh, and that's it very just, cool. We thought about changing it, but it just it stuck. It's, it's stuck. You know, it's, it's stuck. Awesome. It, yeah. It's stuck for years. So um, really, the gym was built as a segue to get us into into Jim Jones, and now it's be, now the the project is just a satellite. Right. So that's kind of how it's what it's evolved into. So, you Very know, this cool. is Jim Jones St. Louis, but it's Project Deliverance. So Right, that's exactly. It it's has. their so, methodologies, yep. but you're the coach and right. person. Now, was there a process like, hey, you're going to be a coach for Jim Jones? Like anybody okay. could go probably work out at the gym, but they can't right. be a coach, right? So um, I attended their first seminar. They had one seminar in 2008, the Athletic Development Seminar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I attended that and did well enough to get invited back for a week long camp with them, you know, sponsored week long camp and was uh, training under the general manager there at the time. And uh, yeah, just really soaking up the knowledge. And uh, I had so much energy, you know, that's what they were all saying. Yeah. You know, all these martial artists were like, God, this kid, you know, this 20 year old has so much energy. We're just, <laughs> he's done two workouts a day for a week. And how is he not dead right now? <laughs> So. Yeah, especially when you go on. That yep. was the first thing I did when I did it was what everybody else does. Right? Yep. You go on Google. Yep. And you jump on YouTube and you watch a video and you're like, Yeah. I mean, your head just like right. weans back, like, eh, this mm -hmm. is a whole nother right. level of what you're used to. You know, because I had been yep. to boot camps and training sure. sure. know, private training facilities where they're like, Oh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna run through a CrossFit exercise. Like, well, that's mm -hmm. tough. This is like 
Yeah, it's a whole yeah. other whole, 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 whole other level. I think the intensity is much more focused in Jim Jones than in CrossFit. It's more focused toward what you're training for instead of hey, let's just go do the workout of the day and go really really hard and just you know get get crushed and we'll come back tomorrow. So right. Um, you know, that, that worked for me when I was 20 or 21 or 22, because it, in my mind, if I'm working really hard and I'm hurting, that's going to make me better. But right. as I've gotten older, it's okay. If I'm going to work hard and, and, and hurt, how is it making me better? So I'm not just going to go hurt just to hurt. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And, and, well, that makes perfect sense. You know, sense. any, any, any idiot can go tear himself up in the gym, but you got to know why you're doing it. And that's really what the gym is all about. You know, if you're going to go and trash yourself, it's got to be, you got to know what this workout is is kind of pushing you towards what's your end goal which i can see that principle so, coming into play especially with what you're right. doing now right you know, say i've seen the pictures man yep. the arnold yeah i mean yep with that more competitive right, right. power lifting bodybuilding yep. type of scenario right you yeah. have to you've got to train train with a purpose so yeah, you, you can't just to, you can't just come in and just be like oh you know this looked hard you know this guy on my Instagram did this and I, I think I can get a faster time than him. So I'm going to just do this just to, just to show him up, you know, right. there's gotta be a, a bigger reason than that. Now, uh, Jim Jones doesn't really, or do they step in on the nutrition side? You said nutrition. Yeah, person, we, so. um, we've got our own set of nutritional guidelines. Um, generally it, it, if I could condense it down, it's, um, 30, 30, it's about 30% fat, you know, 30% carbs and 30% protein or one third each. Just trying to keep it balanced, um, tailored going, to the sport, right? Right. So, I mean, yeah. if you're going to be, if you're going to, you know, we're just talking about a general athlete here. Yeah. Um, if you're, you know, if you're a, a strength athlete, you might need a little bit more protein. You know, you um, a little bit more fat. You might tone the carbs down a little bit just for body composition. Right. But for someone who's just a general athlete, that's a pretty good rule. Um, stay away from the processed foods. Plenty of water. Uh, basic supplements, you know, daily multivitamin, antioxidant compound, and fish oil. If I could condense right. it down to that, there's some other little points in there that it expand on those points. But that's just, you know, that's the basic approach. Right. Yeah. And so. you guys, and you guys have thrown in at least last time I was there, there was the cryo piece too. So yep. you had that yep. as well. Yeah, we're to help with. We're super, super fortunate to work with the Sub Zero Wellness um, brand. You know, that's Megan Sanders' baby, and she does. She does. She does incredible body work. She works on the blues and the cardinals. And now, would that work yeah. for everybody? Like, like per se, a guy works at a desk, maybe goes on two runs a week, and a guy like mm -hmm. maybe like you and I who sure. go to the gym four or five days a yep. week. Um, somebody like you who goes to the gym. Seven yeah, days yeah, a week. yeah, seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> but is is that a is that like is the cryo piece a mm -hmm. principle that everybody can take advantage of? Oh, or is it good for everybody? Uh, yeah, absolutely. They, uh, I mean, really, it doesn't. If you're if you're training a couple of days a week, um, you're going to see some kind of benefit from that. Um, one thing that we really tell our clients, and it's true, each cr each cryo treatment is like five to seven hundred calories, and may even be more than that. Wow, because all of your blood comes to your core, gets enriched with nutrients, and then it has to permeate back out. And that takes energy. So no kidding. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you get an so extra that's everybody. I mean, that's across because yeah. I've had so many people ask me like, Hey, yeah. is it a, and I'm like, I'm like, I've done it one time. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's quite good. I need to do it's it quite more good. often. It's a, yeah, it seems like I've read about the inflammation right. piece. And the more that you do it, the more effective it becomes. So really? it's more of a cumulative effect when you do it, you know, and you, and you, you string those sessions together. Very so, nice. Okay, yep. cool. And then I guess another question I had for you was your role now. Okay. So you've kind of transitioned with this Jim Jones yeah, thing to this thing now. Yeah, there's, you know, so. over the past, I would say since 2017, there's been quite a bit of um, changes. You know, we, there's been people exiting the gym and there's been some people coming in. So um, I'm now the director of programming. So right. yeah, um, do a whole lot of work writing the online programs. We're working on launching a new app where people will be able to uh, access those programs. No kidding. We've got some older training awesome. programs that I'm going back through and I'm adding a little bit more meat to the bones just to kind of modernize them a little bit because, you know, you look at a plan from 2014, it might not exactly be how we would write it today. So, right, yeah. you know, I would say, okay, if it, instead of just saying warm up, I'm going to expand on that a little bit. You know, it says cool down, I'm going to expand on that. If there's something in the middle that doesn't quite meet our standard for, you know, training today i'm gonna you know update that so the direction is there versus right. in the past when it was very like right. yeah. broad language and that's how okay. you know the original 300 training was so i mean it was pretty 
just basic stuff. Whereas if I was to write that program today, it would be much more blown out, much more expanded. So people could see all the little things that we're doing. Okay. So very cool. Very yep. cool. And you're running that. Is that like a nationwide, like you're running that? Whole oh yeah. Way? I'm running for, you know, I'm, you know, you're I'm programming all of it. Oh yeah. Conversing daily with the people out in Salt Lake city. With and their, that's where they're their, based, right? Yeah, they're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was just there. I got back this, you know, late, late week last week. So, and now you're back in, tell me about this experience, man, with the, uh, the, the, competitions you've been in oh man He's looking you know tense, i mean wait i mean doing the doing the weightlifting competitions it's a whole nother you know animal from track and field or or football you know you get three attempts on snatch three attempts on clean and jerk one minute to make your lifts if you're following yourself like if you got one lift and then you you're the next guy up you get two minutes so wow. but generally um you got some competitors that are working in in there so you can get anywhere from two to 10 minutes, even depending on how big of a jump you no have kidding. from first to second attempt. So, so it's just, yeah. So yeah. that's one thing that was really weird. I watched online kept, mm-hmm. after I saw that picture of yep. you at the Arnold, cause remember you yeah. you're like, look, yeah. Arnold. I was yep. like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. that's right. So I was like, man, I'm like, how does that? And then I started to see, yeah, the regimented style in which yep. it's done. It would make me, I would actually be right. very nerve wracking. Well, when the IWF, the international weightlifting federation, people come in and they run the Olympics. They run a tight ship over there, man. You better be. When they call your name, you got one minute. And get you up, got, do what you, you got to do. and You got one minute to get out there and make it happen. So, you know, Gee, make or miss. So, like a Nike commercial. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's and, you know, training under John North, he was there coaching me through it, and he would send me out with 30 seconds. You know, he would, that's just what he started doing. He'd be like, all right, Matt, you're up. And I was like. So you got 20 seconds to amp you up. Well, I like, crazy chalk, I'm like chalking man. my hands and they got the big TV next to me, you know, with my name and it says the weight, you know, how much weight it is. And it's got the clock counting down next to my name. And I'm, I'm rubbing chalk on my hands and I'm looking at the clock and it's 28, 27. That's how much time I have to get set and initiate. So Jesus. I'm like hurrying up to the bar. You don't have any time to think, you know, you, you, you get set, you, you know, hook your grip. And just go. You don't have time to <laughs> sit there and wait. But he, yeah, you man, know, he, he, uh, looking back, he did that for a reason to keep me from thinking about it. You got thirty seconds. Go. You know? John North. Mm-hmm. I know. I probably should know that name. Sure. How did um, you select him as a coach? What made you use that or go that direction? So I started. Uh, I went to one of his seminars back in 2016 just to gain a little bit better understanding. He teaches the snatch and clean and jerk a little bit differently than uh, USA weightlifting does. So I wanted more info on that. And I just love the energy that he lifts with. You know, John's won nationals a number of times um, and the, the old 94 K class, you know, that was a class up until about two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, um, you know, he's been on T- team USA. He's got, he's had a, oh, wow. a brush with death. He had a total heart block back in September of 16, right after I trained with him. Um, and, and so came back and yeah, he, does he, it now. he's, he had that whole experience of, you know, dying and then bringing him back. back. So, I mean, luckily there was someone there that knew CPR Jesus. and kept the oxygen going into his brain. So he didn't have any higher brain damage from it. Oh but, my God. Yeah. He's got a defib in his chest and his under his rib cage here, but now he's more of a coach than he is a competitor. So he's got this big o- online team that he manages, uh, attitude nation barbell club. Wow. And, um, uh, yeah, so we we send him our training videos, and he sends That's us, crazy. you know, he coaches everyone up by screenshot. And he's still in it. That's crazy. With he's all still that. in it with all that. I mean, he'll come out and, ma- you know. He'll, That's awesome. Yeah, he'll he'll come out and max out with you. So he's still, you know, he's, Man. we're going to have a big camp at um, Project Deliverance in probably October. So he'll be out in October. He'd be What's, a guy to have on your show. Yeah, I mean, we got to get that guy on here. You talk about. Yeah, he's really He's really something. Bring you guys he's, together. That'd he's, be fun too. He's, he's super intense. So You're prepping for one right now, aren't you? Yeah. So the American Open in Las Vegas, uh, September, it's going to be sometime between September 16th to 20th. I'm guessing mm-hmm. it'll be the 18th or the 19th for me. It just depends on how many people are there and which flight that I get into. So if I do what I'm supposed to do, I'll be in the A flight, which is the top flight for my weight class. So okay. I was in the B flight at the Arnold. So, and there's, you know, it goes all the way down to G. So, oh, wow. yeah, so I was, I was up there, you know, yeah, it just felt, a, felt good to be in those, one of those top groups. Yeah, man, that's amazing. So, that's unbelievable. Yep. Congrats. Thank you. My God. Um, so now I got to ask, okay. Training a potential champion in the yep. UFC one day, um, we're thinking. Yeah, man, I mean, I'm, that's, I'm, I'm so blessed to be able to train Sean, Sean Woodson, man. He's, he's just, you know, the, 
the energy that he brings to the the training and his dedication to the craft. He's got a he's got his own long backstory getting into the fight game. But yeah, I mean he he's been working with me since June of 2018. And um, and you're yeah, just your strength and conditioning. Yeah, he's got yeah. a team. I'm guessing like everybody right. else. Does, yeah. Right. So here in St. Louis, he trains at Wolves Den. That's his primary gym here. He bounces. He's been to Watson's Martial Arts here a couple of times. Um, he goes out and he trains at Glory MMA out right. in Kansas City. That's James Krause's gym. Um, he goes out there per- periodically, you know, for tune ups, and you know they got a bunch of killers at that place. So he wants to get those. You That's know, his good training. He spot wants he wants to get time looking at those guys, and he's got his guys here that are good as well. What a so for him, like what did he come in seeking you? Did you seek him out and go, dude? I can make you amazing. Like um, what? How did that play out as far as from a finding a coach perspective? So Jordan Dowdy, who works for Sub Zero Wellness. Um, Works, you know, he's the cryo manager for the place that's connected to our gym and for the place out here in Chesterfield. Um, he was like, Matt, you know, I've got this fighter. He's gonna, he's he's gonna be great. He's gonna be in the UFC. I can guarantee it. You know, he's six foot three, fights at one forty five. He's looking for a strength coach. He's never touched weights. This is June of eighteen. I was like, Yeah, man, let's bring him in. You know, I I love working with fighters. Yeah, and I've got a whole lot of them right now. So he. He came in and I, you know, we just started with the basics and just started by getting him strong. He had a rematch against a guy that he beat. The guy was like, hey, I didn't train that hard. So let's do this again. Yeah. And, you know, and that was in October. Actually, I think it was like first week in November. So I trained him from June to November for that fight. And he came out and beat the guy even worse than he did the first time. So, <laughs> yeah, because he had that strength component now, that gym component. Yeah. That oh, you could tell. I mean, if you never follow, had before, you follow, uh, I think it's, uh, you got the Project Deliverance mm-hmm. one is the one where he's yeah. mostly posted. Right. Man, you could see he's how really much, how much start cut to be up lean is. and cut up and, you know, really defined. Right. And he's got, like I said, that he's got that John Jones. Yeah. Well, you know, he used link. to fight at heavyweight, right? Oh, my God. Yeah. Really? And he, he lost about 100 pounds. 100 yeah, pounds. Yeah. He used to fight it. He used to be heavyweight. So Jesus, I'm that's, sitting over that's, here freaking that's out about not a 30. lot of people know that, that he used to fight at heavyweight. Like, you know, he did that and then he just kept dropping the weight class and you know, he fought at middleweight, welterweight. And the advantage of that, probably know you can get hit by a real big dude and survive right. it. Right. Oh that's, yeah. So, I mean, you know, these, the, the smoke that these guys are bringing in featherweight, he's, you know, they don't have the kind of strength that, you know, getting hit by a, getting hit by heavyweight. So he's felt it. He's yeah. felt that kind of power. Right. And that gives him confidence because he knows he can he can absorb it. Yeah. He oh can take yeah. It. And if you if you watch the way he fights, when a guy will throw at him, he'll he'll kind of roll with it. Yeah. And let it let it just go. Um if you watch him fight Kyle Kyle Bokniak, you know, the guy would, would try and close the distance and throw and he would just roll it off. He'd just roll with it and it wouldn't yeah. even connect fully. That's awesome. So man. yeah, but he's just got great, great skill set and, and he's up Saturday. Right, yeah, Saturday at 4 o'clock. I think he's the third fight on the card. Initially, we thought he was first. It looks like he's third now. So we'll be, we'll be watching out here. Dude, that's awesome. We'll be I watching we'll, for we'll, sure. We'll, we'll be excited. Crossed. Support right. our St. Louis guys for sure. That's right. Um, Absolutely. And then, man, I had one other thing I was going to ask you about him that I can't remember what it was, though, about the, uh, the last fight he had. Okay. Didn't, wasn't he scheduled for somebody, and then it got? So he was scheduled it was initially. It was a big thing, and then COVID hit. So he was initially scheduled for a May fight with uh, Sung Woo Choi from South Korea. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then yeah, we okay. were, you know, we were, you were a couple of weeks we out, were, right? We were aiming for that. And then COVID hit. And, you know, we were like, well, you know, shit, this guy can't make the trip into the States from South Korea. They're just not going to allow them to come over. Yeah. So, Same thing could be Brandon. Too. Right. He couldn't um, come over and fight. Yeah. Right. And then um, as quarantine went on, you know, we, we, were, we were meeting up at a track. For, for a while, we were, I was sneaking him into the gym, you know, just him. So, because we got this neighbor that kept calling the health department on us every time we would right. just show up at the building. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was sneaking him in and training him. And then um, it was looking like he was going to fight Jared Gordon. And Jared Gordon turned it down. So. No kidding. You know, he's like, oh. He started bringing up the record stuff and how, like, Sean hasn't had that many fights. And Sean was like, you know, when someone starts bringing that up, you know there's something else at play. Like, it's not – it's more of a, you know, I don't want to lose to this guy. Like, I'm scared to fight this guy. But if he was honest and came out and said, like, hey, man, on this short notice – this is not a good matchup for me. You know, he's like, yeah, man, I, you know, I understand that. Yeah. You know, that makes so sense. this, you know, if he comes out, he's like, yo, this is a really tough opponent. I don't have enough time to prep, you know, 
maybe we can do this at a later time, you know. But no, he's like, oh, I don't, I don't want him. So I don't want him. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I so either. he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't want those knees, is what he doesn't want. Yeah, so. exactly, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So how have you? I was gonna say, speaking of that, how has Project Deliverance Jim Jones handled COVID? Um, so we know that's been rough on fitness in general. Oh, absolutely. Um, we've had to really pivot and go to more to an online sort of service for Jim Jones. We, um, we're getting ready to, to launch a new website and a new app. We're going to offer our seminars online, which is a first. So we're going to be filming that pretty soon. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I was going to actually invite you to see if you want to come and come to one of the, one of the dry runs of this. Oh yeah, man. So, you, you know, know me. I'm, I'm all in. We don't have a, a price or anything for it, but I'll definitely get 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 back to you with that. Yeah, so, man, we would. Then, I'd love to do it. That's and a, you'll that's get your hands on the updated curriculum, and you'll get the full experience. So and yeah, then you'll man. then you'll that's be a, on you'll be on video for the online stuff. So <laughs> yeah, yeah man. man, I love. Hey, that's that's awesome. So, so they so that was innovated because of COVID, pretty right, much, right? They right. basically were like, we can't have this happen again. Yeah, it's something that our our owner Lisa Bouchard wanted to do years ago. It just with the personnel we had in place back then, it didn't really, it just didn't happen didn't, for yeah. whatever reason. I wasn't involved in that. I can't really get into it, but it just short, you know, long story short, it didn't happen. Right. So so now they're yeah. looking to have that available, and then for right. you for Project Deliverance, right? Does that transcend to you as well, or do you have to? Build your own online curriculum. Um, yeah, if we wanted to do, uh, if if we wanted to do something like that, we would have to build our own. But really, like the lines are getting blurred between PD and Jim Jones. Right. Like it's just, I mean, they're kind of one and the same. Um, I got a p- potential girl coming to intern that's going to be a fully certified coach, so she'll be. Now you probably had what down. two or three guys that you were working with at. Yeah, last so, time I was there, and that's, it's been a little bit. So but. I've got um, I've got Summer and AJ, who are husband and wife that work for right. me, and that's who we've got right now. So it's just, you know, I mean, we we've had some 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 turnover over the years, but you know that's the nature of the business. People are going to go and do their own thing. Yeah, so man. you just yeah, gotta absolutely you gotta keep doing you and keep keep moving forward. Yeah, so, that's the nature of yeah. us. And you're coaching again. Oh yeah, so yep. local yep. <laughs> local <laughs> football coach. Yep. Um, walk me through that, that since like you started what, two, three years ago, strength. Yeah. Um, yeah. I started coming back to Lutheran South where I graduated and you graduated from, um, 2017, just a real, real bruiser of a team that year. We had some, some seniors, uh, Cody Schrader who plays for Truman, uh, Keyshawn Spragans, who's over at McKendry right now. Just, just, just killers, man. They're just men amongst boys out there. And we, um, actually made it to the, the semis that year. Uh, yeah, Cody ended up getting hurt against Park Hills. That was probably the biggest game that South football has ever won is when we they came in undefeated and we knocked them out, knocked them out of the playoffs. Oh, man. So that was it was a, I've never seen the school that full. You know, it was just, just packed. you know, they got yeah. the fence around the track. There were yeah. people all around the fence and the stands were completely full. Yeah. So it was just it was a really cool experience to see that. And, you know, we were we were up big at halftime and they started to come back and we had to really rally the kids because they were getting tired in the fourth quarter. Yeah. You know, these guys came out pissed because they were down 28 to seven. Yeah. And, you know, we're <laughs> in the locker room and this is, you know, 20, this is November, 2017. And, you know, I just had a bad feeling, you know, cause we were up by three scores and the kids are like, coach, don't worry about it. And I was like, no man, like you don't know what's about to come. <laughs> and sure enough, you know, we kicked off to them and they drove down and scored. So I was like, all right, well, you know, we need to, hold the line if we're going to win this game. Yeah. So, and, you know, Cody Schrader played hurt that entire game, and that was the game that knocked him out for the semis. Wow. So he ended up um, breaking his sternum, and he played the rest of the game with it, which is real painful to do. Yeah, that so, would be, and yeah, he was, be tough. Yeah, he's just a tough hombre, man. Yeah, so, that's that's yeah. cool. Still training him? Um, he's in – he Off he's, season, I guess yeah, you would say, because yeah, I mean, of Truman. He's, um, he's training at a, uh, with a couple of other coaches. Sometimes we, we uh, see him through for cryo. And you know, kids are always welcome, so I don't. I try not to pressure them to come in to train. Yeah, I see. So, I was gonna say, yeah, you're yeah. still working with them on right. a regular week by week basis, off season and um, during the season, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see him too much. He's got a couple other coaches that you know are sensitive about where he goes, but you know, that's <laughs> that. You know, that's that's how it is. So yeah, you know, you absolutely. Know, I'm just, I just try and go with the flow. So yeah, yeah. Man, definitely. Yep. So what? What would be, I guess, the transition? Like, are you guys 
Would Project Deliverance ever get any bigger, or would it um, stay as a one location thing? How do you see that going forward? I I could see us staying as a one location thing because um, it's I prestigious. Could, yeah, I know? could I could see us moving to a bigger building. You know, mm-hmm. in a couple of years, I could see us. Um, you know, this is something that my wife and I have talked about about buying a, a big warehouse, like a two story warehouse, and reno- re- renovating the top floor and living up there. Yeah, and then we'll have. 20,000 square feet for the gym downstairs. Yeah, there you so, go. So, and I can walk downstairs and go to work, you know? <laughs> so, I don't have to get in my car anymore. I can, you know, you know, the guys can walk in and start getting warm, and I can walk down the stairs, so. Now, are you focusing on, I noticed when I, last time I went, are you focusing quite a bit there on some of the powerlifting guys? Is that really yeah, we've got, the man, forte you've been? we got a really good group of, uh, power, of power lifters over there. We got a couple of firemen that are really – Really strong, to, uh, Toby Catraba, man, that guy, that guy's an animal. So he's probably the top guy we have right now. Um, six fifteen dead, six fifteen squat. Oh my god, he's you know three eighty five bench. So just a just a bruiser. Jesus, you know competing? Guys, or no? Yeah, oh yeah, the guy's built like a pit bull. So <laughs> he's just if if you're if you're stuck in a fiery building. That's a guy this you want guy, kicking yeah. the door in, it's a yeah. Door in, yep. That's a guy <laughs> you want kicking the door Runs in. Runs right through the brick wall, <laughs> right? Yep, that's right. Yeah, but yeah, that's we got it, awesome. and and we've got this other group of guys. That we got four brothers that train together over at the gym. So right. So we got Andrew Ballant, Danny Ballant, Josh Ballant, and John Ballant. So and all these guys are oh training. You know, God. Andrew's more of a um, a guy training for selection. Um, so he doesn't lift quite as much, but he's still strong as an ox. And then we got Danny, who's, you know, just a freaking monster. He gained probably 40, 30 to 40 pounds training at the gym. And then Josh, his younger brother, who's, you know, don't tell Danny this, he's arguably stronger. You know, pound for pound, he's stronger. Yeah. So he's, you know, he weighs 50 pounds less and squats more. So. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I, think, I I saw the one, I think I saw the younger of the two. Yeah, the, yeah, John. In the morning. Yeah, because yeah, he so. was. I mean, yeah, yeah, he's a, you know, that, that's that, a monster. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. That kid's a beast too. And he's only, he's going to be 19 on, on Sunday. So no he's, kidding. he's really young. <laughs> yeah. So what did you, so quick question about the, like one of the things I like about Project Deliverance is the programming. Okay. The programming is more performance based than sure. it is like, sure. Everybody comes in and does the same right. thing. Right, right. When you go through that, like when you go through, obviously you said you take some of it from Jim Jones. Is okay. any of that authentic? Like Matt Owen came up with this type of workout. Yeah, um, quite quite a bit of it. So there's a little bit of crossover. Um, you know, say someone comes in and they want to get strong for powerlifting. There's yeah. a lot of my personal experience from like Lindenwood football, Lindenwood track. You know, stuff. You know, stuff that I picked up from other coaches. Yeah, that's my own blend. You know, John North says that. You know, all these all these coaches are just like junkyard cars, and they've got, you know, useful pieces. You can take pieces of them, and you can kind of piece That's yourself a really together. Really good analogy for he a said. Coach, you know, yeah. every single coach is like that. They're just like they've got wheels from this this guy. They got you know an engine from this this guy. So and it, yeah. there's just you're just cobbled together. So um, yeah, really, all of it is you know stuff that I've written, and really the Jim Jones programming is start to look more like that. You know, stuff that I've put together because that's my experience. That's how I know how to work. So, right. And if I try and change that, it's, you know, I got to sit down and really work at it and be like, you know, really focus on doing it a different way. If I want to. So if you're a kid, so so let's say, let's say I'm, let's, let's go back in time. We're 16, 17 years old. Okay. Obviously strength conditioning is a big thing right now. Right. Kids want to get into it. Right. Um, More than ever. Fitness is bigger than it's ever been. Yeah. What, what would you? What advice would you give for the next human performance, um, um, you know, athletic performance trainer that's going to come up? Like yeah, what kids, to do? So kids like coming out of high school today that want to get yeah. into it, I would say probably, you know, go and find a coach that you really, you know, like in terms of training, you know, in terms of methodology and get, you know, develop a relationship with them and uh, learn as much as you can from them. Right. There's a guy that trains at uh, trains the fighters at American Top Team. He's yeah. like a conjugate monster. Like this guy, he does a whole lot of really cool stuff, like West, you know, West Side Barbell um, sort of things with all of his fighters, and right. follows the block model. You know, fa- foundation transmutation re- realization. Um, he does a really good job. So you know, finding someone like that to really learn from and absorb as much knowledge from is super important. Yeah, I was gonna say being able to. 
compare your methodology with sure. the way you actually train. Right. So, right. Yeah. Cause I'm always yeah. curious. I mean, I've met kids that are like, I mean, even when you go to your place, right. you know, like right. you're seeing some of these younger kids. I mean, they're 15, right. 16 years old. And it's like, dude, they're, yep. they're super interested. And in really this. on the other side of that is once you, once you develop a relationship with this coach, go and find another one and learn from him too. So, so a little variety is good in this. Yeah. You know, saying, go no and, you know, go and seek out a whole bunch of different areas that you're interested in and learn from the best, you know, try and seek these guys out and go and learn from them. Oh, that's so, awesome. You know, buy, yeah. buy a training plan from them, go and buy a month of training and train with them. Or move, so, or move somewhere when you're young where you can for two weeks. Right. Do seminars right. Like you did. The best yeah. thing that I ever did was get into Jim Jones and train under those coaches that were there at the time and really figure out how their minds work and how they develop the programming. So you got to really get hands on with them and train with them. Oh, that's cool. To experience it and soak up that knowledge because all of us athletes learn by putting our hands on it and by doing it. Yeah. Instead yeah. of like, oh, go and read this book about, you know, conjugate sequence. It's I know. Like, okay, I bought that, you know. that uh, tactical performance book. Yep. Remember, I showed you. I sent you a yeah. picture. I was like, dude, this looks interesting. I read it, and that's the first thing I realized. I was like, dude, the only way this is going to work is if I were to practically put this in right. with a coach and say, mix up this right. programming. Because for me, it doesn't right. quite right. click in how I would put it together. And if you look at the like West Side tactical stuff that Jason Gusick runs out at his gym out in uh, Indiana and getting out there and working with him, right when Sean got his UFC contract, I went out to learn from him. And be like, oh, okay, really? what do you do with, you know, Eddie, Eddie Wineland's his guy. And he's been his guy for a lot of years. I was like, you know, I want to learn what you use with Eddie so I can take some of that and use it with Sean. And that's been the real difference, you know, from um, what we did for him initially, which was really good because he just needed some fundamentals. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, preparing for Kyle Bachniak and preparing for this guy, even though now it's a whole different opponent. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a whole different opponent. We changed it all. So, we, yeah, uh, I mean, it would that would change the way, you know, if I knew that we were going to fight this guy instead of Kyle Nelson, it would have – It would have changed the whole game. Cha- not the whole thing, but it would have changed certain nuances of – things okay so i would have done things a little bit differently but still you know the guy's got a different brand of fight uh, slightly different brand of fighting he's taller um i don't think he's going to be quite as physical but i feel like we still got a we got a really good prep cycle in now does that work good with uh the crossover like your crossover now like you've got ufc guys Mm -hmm. you've got power lifters does that cross over well with the football thing yeah, um, I know you got players coming in that aren't going to just south. I mean, you got football players, right? Yeah, I got a, a running back from Ladue that is a monster. That is just an absolute. I mean, he's Division One material. Like he'll be, he'll be, he'll go to Kansas State or you know, someplace like that. Could even probably go to Mizzou. I'm not sure where he wants to go, but he's definitely Division One material. And there is quite a bit of crossover in terms of just the tactical prep for fighting and the tactical prep for football. Weightlifting and powerlifting is kind of its its own beast because your your competition is in the gym. You're not out on the field. You're not in an octagon. You're so, not squaring off with anybody. Yeah, and yeah. what's what's cool is you can put your hand on that same imp- on you can practice your competition lifts there in the gym. So right. you're getting that that pathway. Yeah. Whereas like you know fighting, you know you get a whole bunch of different looks. So we try and that's cool. Not really simulate Man, it, cool. but you know do certain things to strengthen those pathways. So, That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, dude, I appreciate you, yeah, man, uh, man you. taking the time to go through all this with me. And, a- absolutely, you know, dude. And I'm sure. going to bring you back on. We're definitely going. Okay. Let me know when John is in town. I will. I will. And, dude, he would, you guys he would love together, to come man. over. Uh, when's, yeah. your next, when's your next comp? That's um, coming up, isn't it? September 18th or 19th. So I can Somewhere get you in, in here in the sure. fall. We're going to yeah. follow up. We're going to bring John great. in. Yeah, that'd be really See good. It all. That'd be fun, awesome, man. man. In the meantime, you can throw me on any videos okay. you want first. Yeah, <laughs> Dad, that'd be, yeah. We got we to get you in so you can train so I can get some footage. Dude, I got to, yeah, I got I to gotta get rid of all yeah. this. You know, my, yeah. my, my, my summer beach body right. just went straight down the drain. That's right, man. But, uh, oh, that's, dude, I appreciate right, you coming sure. on, man. You, have you yourself, betcha. Hey, thank you. All right, man. Anytime, anytime. Thank you.